My dear people, I don't come again, no. Now you one and only Oroko Kitty is your fucking And this is the show we not get named. The one and only show we name not be. On this beautiful day, I see, see everybody, they run Helter Skelter. <laughs> I saw the top. Everybody, they run Kurugete, Kurugete. Some people go go church. Some people go their house. Some people not get what they go use take job. I've had enough. And as I can day watch one of our very good brothers like that. And I could tell them I wasn't in talk. I was moved in my spirit to say enough. It's enough. Enough is enough. <laughs> and my dear neighbor, welcome borrow me data wagu can use for this thing. I say thank you. Because I don't get money for this, I'm not gonna lie. You. So let's get right to it. And I'm sure what I'm about to say You've heard it before But I want you to hear it again Because we cannot be tired of talking In Nigeria A nation We get plenty poverty and systemic corruption. The influence of all these churches with full everywhere. Oh boy. <laughs> not be so be there before when Jesus come on. This one don't open my eye. The church is plenty. Then Boku. Many religious institutions. They don't turn into businesses, lucrative businesses. Drawing attention and resources away from the critical need for accountability and good governance. Mega churches led by charismatic figures amass enormous wealth through offerings, tithes, and the sale of religious merchandise. The emphasis on prosperity preaching fosters the culture where material gain is seen as a sign of divine favor, often obscuring the pursuit of social justice and a demand for better leadership. So the question where they hear be say, our pastors, they see miracles. Some, they shoot them, they use their hand to catch bullets. Some don't even drink coffee and tea and zobo with Jesus. Our mumu never, he never done too much, he never finished. With all the miracles they see, why can't they see a miracle or call down the miracle of change in our political atmosphere? And as I just sit down with all these hits where they as really no one can fall, I just a vet. Granot and Garina chop. And the next night, I can't hear noise 
on my backyard, not a church. They did speak in tongues. They disturb me this night. Oh, Guinea Kwan, what can I do now? Can't I sleep? Can't I rest? My Gary and Granots with water because milk no they you know go digest for my stomach I don't want to talk I don't want to talk because I did vex <laughs> so I can say make I play on or something I gonna understand the situation Maybe if I made a talk, I'm gonna not go listen. So with no further ado, I beg you now, beg you now listen to what is our brother talk. And I really appreciate his honesty. So please, sit back. Listen to this. And if you don't get ahead, <laughs> that means my leg go take the use and the thing. Because your head is the thing. Alright, my dear people, we're not ready for studio. Nature of all false prophets to create a conscience where there is none and to cause conscience to disappear where it does exist. As our pastors are the one now destroying Christianity. It is not in doubt that religion is the opium of the masses, and a lot of false prophets have taken advantage of this to deceive and suspecting followers for their own benefit. In Nigeria today, due to Africa, magicians have taken over the house of God, and they parade themselves as prophets of God, while in actual sense, these people are all prophets of Ba. To them, Christianity starts and ends with giving. As they steal in the name of the Lord. The bigger your problem, the bigger you are told to donate. Challenge God and see if he will not offload his blessings upon you, they say. Yet, you never even feel challenge common government when they steal your money every day. But they tell you to challenge God. If you believe them, believe them. Beware of false prophet who come to you in sheep clothing, but inwardly are ravaging wolf. That's what the Bible says. What God cannot do does not exist. And I lie. There are billions of things God cannot do. God gave you a brain, he cannot do the thinking for you. For most of them, religion is nothing more than a substitute for malfunctioning brain. So that's why they remove your ability to do critical thinking and create fear around you. Then send you to you. That fear, the key that unlocks the pocket of the rich and the poor and gullible. They tell you, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for the Lord is with me. Yet, they drive around with bulletproof cars and number of mobile police enough to form a battalion as they frighten you not to give to the poor woman in the village who they claim is a witch that will take your gift to Kovun and uh, tie your destiny. So rather bring it to the church so that the pastor will lay hand on it and before he gives it away. All on a job. That's for one night mentality. They would raise sword against anyone that preaches against tithe and offering or first fruit or taxes that they collect even if that person is, tr is a true Christian or one of them. That's why everything to them starts and ends with donation. Let 20 people come out to give 1 million naira. After that 1 million, they will still reach 100 naira and 5 naira, stealing from both the rich and the poor. The church and pastors want money, they turn to members. But members want money, they are told to turn to God. Why is your brethren? God is not after your money, but your salvation. For these pastors have fleeced more people of their hard-earned money and made more people poor and depressed than they have actually saved people. They are quick to shout Malachi 3.10, but we never point you to Deuteronomy 14.22-29, to where the law of tithing was actually established and you were instructed to eat your tithe. That is why they celebrate the fraudulent, the corrupt, the wealthy, than the meek and the righteous. They claim to be modern-day Levi, but they forget that Levi is a tribe of, in, the, in Israel and yet are not a calling. So show me a lever and I'll give you a time. So why do not call you to Tinubu or Bigate or Elon Musk's family? Only thief masquerading as chief. Instead of a place of worship, they have turned the church into a, a, a gathering where the best of cars 
clothing and materialistic things are showcased. Comic relief are, are, are entertained because of the hollowness and lack of godliness in these places. My God is not a poor God. No wonder more people are now questioning the existence of God. As they say, if his so-called messengers can be this kind of without repercussion, what then is the need? Some of the pastors claim to even drink tea with God and stop natural weather in foreign countries for months. Yet, there's no fee even stop the scorching sun that is burning people here even when light no day. Some claim to raise more people from the dead. Yet, bad roads and non-availability of infrastructure is killing their church members daily. And they never fee even raise them. I mean, church members, they forbid uh, to raise from the dead. Others claim to hold the key to the kingdom. But what their followers do not know is that the key to the vote when they won't give madam and get friends when they're here. Some the so even say they stop a bullet in their hand and drove cars from Lagos to Abuja without fuel. They collect money from you to build schools, yet you can't afford to send your children there because of exorbitant fee. They promise you, they ask you to invest in the heaven, but are quickly collecting their return on investment here on earth. They tell you all sorts of lies in the name of God. And rather than lead people to God, they are actually chasing people away from God why the few credible ones in church are silent because of mob criticism. Even motivational speakers today call themselves pastors too. As more people are calling God instead of God calling them. And why they criticize politicians in the afternoon, they go to collect title and offering from these same politicians in the night. And why you continue to carry your own cross. I will therefore advocate until we begin to judge this so-called God of men, masquerading as men of God, so that we also will be judged will continue to have charlatans occupy the pulpit until they completely eradicate the gospel and replace it with their own thought. True religious leaders must urgently rise up and speak up if they must salvage the already bad situation. To return to higher standard of living, the church, can, PFL, and all, of, all other associations must abandon the so-called prophets and seek new leaders of their own choosing. The government on its own or it's a duty to the society to create sanity and was established laws to limit the prevention of religious centers all in the name of winning souls while they are actually destroying souls. If you like, insult me from now till today. It will not stop me from calling out your pastors. So well, let me listen to your insults on our comment section in all our social media uh, platforms showing on your screen. And for those who share the same sentiment with me, please feel free to share we can collectively sanitize these birds, chase this boar head out of the yard. For if we remove tight, offering, first fruit and all revenue collection from most of these churches, they will fold up on their own. Remember, in prosperity teaching, preaching, only the pastor prosper. Why you who is giving remains poor, so bury yourself the brain. See you next week. Hola, here I am. <laughs> that was TV360, and that was uh, Mr. Laborious Oshoma. I hope I said your name well. Oga, Oga Liboros, Oga Oshoma. You spoke well. You spoke into the hearts of many people. I wish and I know, you know, I, I don't know if you're aware, but you spoke into the hearts of man. Yes, yes. The lucrative religious industry indeed distracts citizens from the feelings of the government. You know, instead of uh, that channeling of energy towards a transparency and effective governance, we seek for solutions in the supernatural. Isn't that stupidity? No, isn't that stupid? Hoping for miracles rather than mobilizing for change. Miracles won't change Nigeria. Miracles won't do nothing for the country. We need change. Change we must get. Yes. Yes, change must happen. Yes, churches play a vital role in providing community and support. 
but their increasing commercialization creates a blind spot for societal awareness or in societal awareness. Citizens become less likely to scrutinize government actions and hold their elected officials accountable because their focus is shifted towards their religious institutions promising wealth and individual prosperity. God win. Chukwe Bekin now. Oh, whoa, Luwa Mbe Luria Ye Mio. Oh, whoa, Luwa Be Luria Ye Mio. Ombe mi fo. Ombe mi sare. But if God is going to really be the hand upon our lives and guide us and give us the speed we need. All I ask and demand is that our guidance and speed be directed towards the change that we need in Nigeria. And not just Nigeria, the change that we need in Africa. Keep your tights, feed your families, send your families overseas, let the money work in your households, not in these churches. Put your monies to businesses, invest in yourself. And I bet you, within 365 days, if you do not see a change, oh, oh, mm. hey home, if you see me, do what you like. Try it. My dear people, I'm not going to come talk too much today. I just came to share this beautiful, you know, this beautiful piece I saw with uh, Mr. Laborio Soshama, TV360, shout out to them. We must wise up. We must be smart. All my people, we don't buy data to listen to this. I wish you a beautiful Easter ahead. And we enjoy the egg and the chicken where we go chop. And let us remember. Change starts from our home. And on that note, I leave you with a question. What's the most annoying habit a person can have? <laughs> you know, so I must answer my own. <clears throat> the most annoying habit a person can have is waiting for mana to fall from heaven and making your brain stagnant the most annoying habit for a person to have is electing the same criminals into power expecting a different result she and i don't clear regardless of political party APC, PDP, LP, NNPC, NNCP, whatever it's called. We need fresh ideas, fresh governance. We're not asking for too much. And then my second question I ask you, what is your biggest cause of stress? <laughs> I must answer the second or the biggest, sorry, the, oh, the biggest cause of my stress is Nigeria. It is Tinubu, Bula Tinubu. Shea one, Shea Tima. 
the Nigerian governance, the Nigerian leadership structure. That is the cost, the biggest cost of my stress. I will not stop until the stress is removed. Let's not forget that people die during NSAS. And let's not forget all of all those and all other past heroes that have died towards making the country great again. Until I see you now, all the best. Keep the hope alive. Change must come, not will. Because when we keep willing, it means we are hoping for manna. It must come. Because we must sit with people who protect our name in our absence. And the Nigerian government does not do that. Until we speak again. Take care. Have a great one. And bye. And if you are wondering what this is, this is the show where no get name. And I'm your host. Is Yafa. Is Yafa Kego. Name. We better pass money. We strong pass money. Uruko Gidi. Strong name. Powerful name. Money can buy. Right. No chance. Take care.